I do want to give Yorkdale Lincoln a huge shout out and a thank you for giving me access to this vehicle to shoot the video for you today. Check down in the description below for their contact details. And if you're looking at either ordering a Lincoln, Ford, so whether that's the Aviator or the Explorer ST, the Ford equivalent, you can reach out to these guys. They'll be able to help you out and they have a surprising amount of inventory on the lot right now. But let's dive into it and unpack it because the Aviator, this specific one, looks really, really sharp. And there are a few reasons why. It has the new jet package that's available in the vehicle. We've got these beautiful 22 inch wheels and they look fantastic. Now, the Aviator in general, you're going to have either 19s, 20s, 21s, or 22s, depending on which packages you've gone for, what trim level, etc. So we do have a few options. Now, when it comes down to the trim level itself, we do in Canada only have two options available. Down in the States, you've got four different trim level choices. So we've got the Standard, Reserve, Grand Touring, and the Black Label. So in the States, you've got the Standard and Black Label, which unfortunately we can't get up here. But at the same time, this still does look fairly nice. So this one is the Reserve 201A, which is the highest package available in Canada, looking at the regular gas model. But it's great. We've got our all-wheel drive. We do have the option for the adaptive air suspension, but exterior styling. What makes the jet package a little bit more unique is what's going on with some of the rockers and things like that. A little bit more pronounced when we get into that white exterior, but the black looks really sharp. It's that black on black look. It just looks mean. But I do love the overall styling. We've got the aviator badge as always along the side, which looks fairly sharp. And then moving in towards the front end, we've got our LED headlamps. And then we've got our fog lamps down below. Now, the fog lamps are actually not standard on the aviator anymore. So we are looking at having to get the illumination package in the majority of trim levels in order to get those fogs. So if that's something that you want, just make sure you let your Lincoln representative know that's a feature that you want to see. But I mean, I love... I gotta say the grill inside of this thing with the jet pack, it looks fantastic. We've got this beautiful honeychrome black grill. It looks really, really nice. We've got our Lincoln star right in the middle. So we've got our forward facing camera. We've got our side view mounted cameras as well as our backup camera. So this thing has a full 360 camera, which looks fantastic. We've got a full 360 view, a front partial view, front 180 degree view. And one of the amazing things is because of all of the different sensors and cameras this has, we also do have a full park assist system. It's phenomenal. But if you want to know how to use park assist, really straightforward, but check down in the description below for that walkthrough and park assist instead. It's a really, really straightforward system to use. Like I said, overall styling, it's really nice. I do like the fogs and just the lamps, the way they sit. Moving over to the hood of the vehicle, this thing looks nice. But let's have a peek underneath. All right now, getting underneath the hood of the aviator is straightforward. It's just on the left side of our pedals. We've got a release. We just need to pull that twice. And once we do, that fully releases it. So we don't need to worry about any sort of thing to kind of push off to the side. We just uh, lift up. So this thing is on hydraulics, which is fantastic, but we've got this. Now, I did mention the aviator does technically have two different options that are available when we look underneath the hood. So, I mean, technically it's the same three liter turbocharged engine, but inside of the Grand Touring, that's when we get into the plug-in hybrid version of the vehicle. But power-wise, this three liter is 400 horsepower and 415 pound-feet of torque. Compared to the hybrid, it's 494 horsepower and 630 pound-feet of torque. It is ridiculous when you get into that Grand Touring. So we do have some electric kilometers and miles that we could look at, but it's really more about some added power that we get from the nano electric motor inside of the Grand Touring. But don't get me wrong, the power inside of just the regular aviator, the three liter is fantastic. But if you're mechanically inclined, you wanna do some things yourself, you could easily top up your fluid as necessary. So windshield wiper fluid, checking, changing oil, a little bit more difficult in the back there. It's kind of covered off with this brace in the middle there, but one thing you want to make sure you're doing is at least maintaining your vehicle. Now, as a Lincoln owner, so Black Label specifically, you will have a prepaid maintenance plan included with your vehicle, but you can get those prepaid maintenance plans at time of purchase. 
And one of the big benefits there is that it's essentially just like a set it and forget it maintenance protection plan. So as maintenance is needed on your vehicle, you just bring it in or get a concierge to pick it up. They do the maintenance as necessary and you're good to go. So you want to make sure you're maintaining to make sure that you're also keeping the manufacturer's warranty active. Because if you're not maintaining your vehicle, any sort of issue comes up and they could say you didn't keep up your end of the buyer's agreement and maintain it. So just make sure you're maintaining, regularly changing your oil, all that fun stuff. All right, taking a peek along our driver's side door. So one thing to point out on the outside here, we do have this little cutout. And that cutout is actually for our emergency access key. So if the, the key fob has ever died, we need to get inside the vehicle. We're just going to take our key fob and we're going to put our emergency access key right in there and twist. Looking along the side view mirror, we do have this little guy. So that's going to highlight orange when somebody's entered the blind spot in either side of the vehicle. We do have our side view mounted camera there as well for part of that 360 system. Now looking along the side here, we also do have a series of other buttons that we can kind of see there. So we've got a five digit number that we can enter in if we need to get inside the vehicle, push the bottom two if we want to lock. And then this thing does have intelligent access. So as long as we've got our key fob on us, we can slide our hand and then just pull and open, she goes. But let's have a look at some of these features. We've got this nice leather there, really, really sharp. Follows all the way through at the inside, all the way across, which is really nice. But series of buttons on the outside here to point out. So we do have a series of different seat memory buttons. So three individual profiles. This button here is going to be for the massage chair seat. So it's a hot button press in order to turn on our massage seats. We do have multi-way adjustable seats. So the buttons that you'll see here are going to depend on whether or not you have the active motion system in your aviator. But one interesting thing is we did have a changeover. So it went from a default 12-way adjustable driver down to a 10-way for the 23 instead. But with the multi-way adjust, the seat adjusts all over the place. We've got more advanced controls when we press that button, forwards, backwards, up and down. We can even adjust, look at this, each individual leg cushion if we wanted to such a cool feature but back on the outside here so series of other options we've got this nice metallic look speaker right in the middle speaker down below because this is the reserve 201a we've got all over the place speakers everywhere we've got our base controls so we can unlock and lock adjust our side view mirrors power fold our side view mirrors we have our window up and down little handle there We've got the actual button in order to be able to get out of the vehicle. So rather than a physical door handle, we've got this instead. If for whatever reason this dies, the vehicle's died, you need to get out. We've got this little emergency release. So what we're going to do is just pull there and that kind of acts as our traditional handle instead. And then we do have a little bottle holder and some storage space along the door. Moving inside, we do have our little Lincoln logo right along the scuff plate there, which is great inside there so we've got this nice metallic look that follows all the way throughout the dash so it goes all the way over which is great we've got this nice glossy black look along the door there moving down series of other buttons so this one is going to let us open and close our lift gate we've also got our fog lamps on off we can adjust what's going on with our running lamps and then we can increase or decrease the brightness of the cluster screen as we start to move down from there we also do have our hood release so getting underneath the hood just going to pull that twice to make it happen. Moving up, steering wheel is going to be power telescoping across the entire vehicle lineup. So just in, out, up and down as necessary. Hmm. Ah, the first row of the aviator, it is. It's really nice, especially looking at the color interior here. It just it pops. It's so much different. Like you could just go for your traditional ebony. And like, don't get me wrong, that ebony, so that black interior with the black exterior looks really really sharp it's almost as good as like the white exterior white interior that combination also looks good but i like this one it's that little bit different the styling is good i mentioned all of the nice highlights around the door we've got that beautiful leather that follows all the way throughout the dash that like metal applique like all the way through the middle there as well looks really sharp and that kind of same feel follows through the center stack there too it looks really really nice 
Now, there are some small differences from the 2022 to the 2023 looking at the interior side of things. We have the option for a head-up display delete. So if you're not a fan of the head-up display, we can actually delete that at time of ordering our aviator from the factory, which is kind of nice. But some other small things to look at. The seats themselves. We went from a 12-way adjustable as the default in 22 to a 10-way adjustable inside of the 23 on the driver's side, and then it's an 8-way adjustable on the passenger side as the default. But having said that, I always recommend in the Aviator, just go for the option for the massage chair seats, the active motion seats. These things are fantastic. So we can get a massage as we go. If you have a tendency to spend a lot of time in your vehicle, distance trips, if you're caught in traffic, etc., having the massage seats, phenomenal. And one of the benefits when we get that adjustable seat is that we have the flexibility of adjusting our driver passenger seat so many other ways. We can literally have this thing hug our body as much as we'd like it to. It's really, really nice. But this is like, it is, it's beautiful overall. I love the digital cluster screen inside of this thing. Next up, let's take a peek at the steering wheel of the vehicle. So this is going to be an in-depth look going over all of the different buttons here, figuring out exactly what's going on. So starting off, firstly, I got to say, I absolutely love the look of the fully digital dash inside of this vehicle. We do have some flexibilities to be able to show a few gauges, but we'll get to that one in just a second. But starting off on the left-hand stick there, so this is where we're going to go in order to use our turn signals. We can also flash our high beams, we can lock it out, etc. There is a button just on the very tip of the stick there, so tip of the stick as you can see there, and that's going to be for our lane keeping system. So we can easily turn that system on or off if we want to, just by doing a simple button press there. Along the right hand side, that's going to give us the flexibility to be able to adjust what's going on with our windshield wipers. We're going to lift up easily there. And on the tip of that stick, so there also is a little button on the end there, and that's going to be for our rear wiper. So we can easily turn our rear wiper on or off there if we'd like to. All right, so let's kind of move through and let's start off with the pad on the left hand side. But before we do, paddle shifters, haha, <laughs> we've got our minus and our plus button there. So we can easily adjust what gear we're in if we wanted to go that route. And that's one of the great things. Like we don't have a manual mode there. So if we look at our buttons along the side, we don't have a manual button there. So it literally is when you want to change gears out as you go, you want a bit more power, just drop down a few gears on that left hand side. Looking at the pad though on the left hand side, so we can adjust our volume easily, so we can move up or down, literally by moving this whole switch up or down there. 28 speakers, so the upgraded Revel audio sound system. So beautiful sound there that's included inside of this trim level of the vehicle, and it is available packaged out in some of the other options as well. Moving to the left of the right hand side, we can easily change between songs or radio stations there, so as you can see there. We can change between active presets if we want to, very simply by moving across there. And if you see all there, so if we press and hold it as well, we can also seek out to different stations going that route. So we do have a little bit of flexibility as to what's actually going on there. Now, we do have a little button there. This is going to be for our adaptive cruise control system. So we push that button and watch this. Okay, hold on, I'm going to drop you down a tiny little bit there. Okay, so we push the adaptive cruise button and here we go. Look at this shows and they hide and they show and they hide it is so nice now right along the side there we've got a series of different buttons so we do essentially have hideaway buttons and these things will change so they're essentially a dynamic button based off of whatever is going on so as you can see there we do have our resume we can set so we can plus or minus out one kilometer or one mile per hour at a time as well off to the right hand side we're going to cancel this is going to be our lane centering button as well. So the one that's literally going to keep us in our lane as we're driving, which is different than the actual lane keeping system. So the button there, lane keeping system is gently going to nudge us in. The lane centering system there is actually going to keep us in our lane. So it's essentially going to be self-driving at that point. Now, not fully self-driving because we technically still need to have our hands on the wheel though. So definitely something to think about. The one on the very bottom here though is going to be our distance indicator. So how close or how far are we away from the vehicle that's in front of us? So pretty straightforward in order to be able to use that. As I said there, as we press that button, it's going to make those buttons disappear. Now these buttons themselves aren't actually touch buttons in the front. It is just behind the steering wheel there. So we want to increase, decrease. We're going to press the button there, resume. We've got our distance indicator off to the right hand side there as well. So we've got some flexibility there. And like I said, we can easily just adjust that if we need to. We can turn it on or off along the right hand side there. So we do have another button there. We push that in order to be able to get into different pages in that middle screen. So as you see there, we jump between active pages. So we've got our calming screen. We've got our trip one counter, which if we just press and hold in the middle here, as you see there, down and reset. So it can reset ourselves very simply that way. Pushing again is going to get us to our fuel economy. Same idea, we're gonna push and hold to reset that. And then we've also got our tire pressure, which this one is off a teeny little bit in that back right wheel. So I'm gonna have to get that one adjusted. 
Now looking there, we also do have this pad on the left hand side that's going to let us adjust individual things as well. So starting off on the left there, so we go left, and as you can see there, we've got our AM, FM, Sirius XM. If we had a USB stick with MP3s, we input it, that would show up as a source. If we had our phone connected, that would also show up as an available audio source as well. But as you saw there, so we jump into one of these settings and it brings us back to our home and then a back button there as well. So these buttons do dynamically update based off of what's going on. So we can go off to the right for OK, we can press back and that's going to adjust these buttons here again. Moving up, we've got our factory navigation there as well. So let's kind of move you up a tiny little bit there and taking a peek. So as you can see there, so we've got factory navigation, we can set up a home address, we can look at previous destinations, favorites, point of interest nearby. So we've got some flexibility as to what's actually there. So let's see, so we, as you can see, we've got a ton of different options there. And if we go to any one of these things, let's say we wanna go grab a coffee. Obey traffic laws, be alert, and use voice commands while driving. Please proceed to the highlighted route and then the route guidance will start. All right, so it lets us know what's going on there. It would also show up in our heads up display there as well. And then if we go over to our navigation on the screen, as you can see, we've got our active route there. So definitely a great thing. We can press the little X button along the very top of the screen to cancel out the route if we wanted to. Or if we press the navigation button up there, we can cancel the route out very simply that way as well. So the route is now canceled. So really that simple. Moving off to the right hand side there is going to be for our phone. So if our phone was connected, we'd be able to make phone calls, things like that. And then down, we've got a few other settings. So we've got our heads up display, so we can turn the heads up display on or off very simply there if we want to. But what's actually showing up on the heads up display, so we can adjust the brightness there if we need to, so we can easily adjust that brighter or darker as necessary. We've got our positioning as well, so do we want to have the vertical position different so we can move it up or down as well. We've got our image rotation, so we can literally adjust which way this thing is going to rotate. And then what content is gonna be there? So we've got our miles to empty, kilometers to empty, et cetera. Our cruise control lane keeping system on as well. So do we want these things showing up, yes or no? So we can customize the content of the heads up display. We've got our base display set up as well. So what kind of screens are showing up there? Do we want our trip one, two, our auto start, stop? Seat belts is kind of a neat one to keep on there. Power distribution and off-road are always great ones as well, but we are maximum, so we can only have a certain number of screens there. So we've got to select which ones we don't want showing. So let's kind of go and adjust a uh, calming screen. Nah, I'm not a big fan of that one because it doesn't show anything there. So if we go off-road for a second, and we go back, we go back again and back again. I could technically have pressed home. That's one of the cool things because if we're in any of these other sub screen, sub menus, things like that, we can just press home and that's just going to bring us back to this home screen instead. And then we go to our individual pages there and we're looking for the one I just added in. We've got that one. Seatbelts we added in there, so that's kind of neat. And then we've got our tire pressure there as well. And we've also got our off road status or so pitch roll, things like that. So we can see exactly what's going on with the vehicle and kind of what's going on on each side there as well. So we can customize what's going on in that middle screen, which is always a nice thing display setup we've got a few other things so we've got our speedometer if we want to show it in miles per hour as well and then as we approach a border do we automatically want to have the speed limits change do we want to add that tachometer to the view so if we do that watch this we go back home ah split view so nice so we've got our tachometer and our speedometer there as well and because we've set one other thing up we've got our, sp our speed showing up there in miles per hour so we do have the option of going back into our display and we can have it set up so that it's kilometers per hour there instead Jumping back, we've also got our oil life, and we can do a reset if we're changing the oil ourselves. but when you get your vehicle serviced at your Lincoln dealer, that's automatically gonna be updated. But as you can see there, a beautiful look. Now, there is one button I haven't done yet, and that's this one. So right along the very top of the steering wheel, we've got another little button there, and that's gonna be for our voice command prompt. So pressing that button, as you can see there, we've got a few options. So we can change songs, radio stations, we can navigate using our voice, we can make phone calls, we can do a number of things button press that in order to be able to cancel it out. So it is nice that we've got a smart system there. Now, if we were connected through something like Apple CarPlay, we would have the flexibility of pressing and holding to use our Siri Assistant, so that's always a nice thing. The paddle shifters is an interesting one because the Aviator, we don't have the option for a low gear. So if you're going downhill rather than wearing out your brakes, traditionally you could just low gear instead. This doesn't have a low gear, but we've got paddle shifters. So one cool thing is that if we are going downhill and we want to focus just on engine braking, we could push the minus button on the left-hand side of the steering wheel in order to drop gears that way if we want to slow ourselves down using engine braking rather than wearing down our brake pads instead. So you do have that available as an option.
Now, one cool thing is that we can have the steering wheel. We adjust it however we want to. We adjust our seat however we want to. We adjust our side view mirrors however we want to. And then we press and hold either one, two, or three in order to be able to save our own personal profiles, which is fantastic. So if you have multiple drivers, we can easily set those up if we want to. But one other button to point out, we've got our three main buttons. We've got another button when we push that, it brings up the option for some more advanced controls to kind of hug the backrest a little bit more, or we can also turn on massage seats. So nice massage seats, I love it. There is one thing, and the Aviator, it looks like, is going to be the last vehicle to get it, and that's the Sync 4 media screen. So for the 23 model, the Aviator still is on the last generation Sync 3 screen. Not necessarily a bad thing because the screen itself is nice, but the Sync 4 screen just kicks it up that one extra notch. So this is going to be a deep dive where you can learn literally everything about what's going on with the Sync 3 media screen. So looking along the very top left, we've got our little home button there. Now we do have factory navigation in this vehicle and this is going to be our base summary. So we've got our maps, we've got what station's currently playing. If our phone was connected, it would show up, but we can easily add a phone in there. We can add a phone in here and there's also an option under settings. But let's kind of go line by line so you can figure out exactly what's going on. Starting off at the top, we've got our current temperature for our dual zone climate control because we can set it individually for the driver passenger seat if we wanted to. So it is pretty nice we've got that flexibility. We've got our clock along the top there and our exterior temperature. Now, if we press the clock along the very top there, that's going to literally jump us into our clock settings so we can adjust some things if we want to. We've got our data transfer there as well. So as you can see, we've got our connectivity and then we've also got one other thing and that's going to be our available Wi-Fi. So if we were connected to a Wi-Fi network, that's essentially what's going to go on with this button along the very top there. Now starting off with our audio there, now we've got our sources along the very top, so we can change between AM, FM, Sirius, XM, etc. If we had a USB stick with MP3s, that would show up as an option there as well. If we had multiple phones connected, etc., we could select whichever one we wanted to connect to there. So as you can see, we are currently on AM, FM. We can direct tune this way if we want to, so we can change out stations that way if we wanted to. We've got a few other options. So we've got this way, we can literally press the voice command prompt on the steering wheel to be able to change out radio stations that way as well if we wanted to. Now, saving a preset is pretty straightforward. Once you've tuned to the station, you're just going to press and hold any of the available preset pages there. And as you can see, it's saved in. But looking along the bottom, it is a mix. So we can do AM, FM, Sirius, XM, and we can have a mix of all of them. Now, if we go into our settings along the very bottom there, we've got a few options, but specifically if we go into the radio, we've got our HD radio, our radio text, and we can change the number of preset pages. So if we go to five, we're going to give that a second to update. And as you can see, we've got five pages, which means we've now got 30 individual presets. So we can literally program in a number of things. So if you're a heavy audio listener, you like to change between different stations, we can easily adjust. We can do a slide there if we wanted to change between different pages. But one thing is kind of neat, because if we go to Sirius XM for a second, we jump into our settings, we've now got a Sirius XM button instead. So jumping into Sirius XM, we've got our same preset pages there. I always recommend just keeping that at five, but we can see we can set our different categories, we can do a parental lockout, so if we want to block explicit content and things like that, we can do that. We've got different presets, we can lock out channels as well. We can skip certain channels, which is definitely a nice thing. So if you want to lock channels out, etc., you can absolutely do that very, very simply. Back and back. And so let's go back to our audio server a second, because if we, oh, there we go. As you can see there, we can start some things. We've got our different channels there, or we can do a direct tune this way. But if we jump back into our sources, go to AM, FM, etc. As you can see there, it's brought us back to our base. It brings it back to our radio settings there as well. So that's the basics of the actual audio system. Next up, we've got our phone. So as you can see there, there currently isn't a phone connected to the vehicle, but it's actually very straightforward in order to be able to set a phone up. So you're just going to hit add phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. Yeah, you're going to want to make sure your Bluetooth is turned on and you're going to click on link in Aviator. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Which these ones do, so we're going to pair it up. Allow contacts and favorites to sync up, yes. For your safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions and use Sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Okay, so phone is now connected. I always recommend turning on 911 assist because this is the one that's going to dial a 911 operator. So if the vehicle senses we're in a collision, it's automatically going to dial 911. And then this, is going to, this one's going to download our contacts. And finish, as you can see, we're connected. We've got my call list, contacts, we've got the phone keypad, do not disturb mode, and a number of other things. Now, if we go into the app section for a second, I've got an app on my phone called LiveX Live. So it's a radio app, which means that we can listen to that directly through this middle screen. We can also listen to Pandora there as well. 
we've got Ford Pass. So the, it's actually an interesting one. So we've got Lincoln Way, Ford Pass. So the Lincoln Way app, I've actually got both apps installed on my phone, but Lincoln Way gives you the flexibility of being able to remote start and things like that directly through your cell phone. So if we go over, we've got the Lincoln Way app there. And we just click on Lincoln Way, and literally all you're going to do is just sign yourself in. But this is where you're going to go. That app, in order to be able to set up phone as a key, you can remote start using your cell phone, and you can do a number of other things, specifically using the phone. So it's definitely a nice thing. Now, as we move back to our phone settings there, so as you can see, a few things. If we had multiple devices connected, we would just go change a phone there as well. Now, we do also have the flexibility of setting up Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, and it's pretty straightforward to do it. So what we're going to do is take our USB cable and plug it into the main USB port there. Opposite end of the cable, we're just going to plug ourselves in. And just wait a sec. Okay, so I need to unlock phone, so we're just going to unlock Apple CarPlay. So we're going to continue out. We have to agree to this setting, and it should be 3, 2, 1. Do I want to allow CarPlay while the phone is locked? Yes, we're going to allow that. Look at this. Big, beautiful, we've got Apple CarPlay inside of the screen. And I absolutely love the way that this looks. We do have factory navigation, like I said, but we do also have the option of using Apple Maps, we can use Google Maps, or we can use Waze directly through this middle screen. We can easily search, we can look, view it are saved, we can use our voice there as well in order to be able to find destinations. Pressing this button along the very bottom there, we also are back into our main settings screen there. And it is nice because we've got quite a little bit of flexibility there. Like I said, we've got podcasts we can listen to, audiobooks, and things like that. Now on our phone, if we jump into general settings, we can go into CarPlay, we can look at Sync 3 and Customize. And then if you have a tendency, oh, maybe you love listening to your podcast, boom, we can update it. You like your audiobooks, bam, we can update it. Never going to use the calendar, let's delete it. Never going to use Google Maps, boom, we can delete it there as well. So if we look along the side, it's deleted a few apps. On our phone itself, it does show the apps that we've deleted along the very bottom. We can customize that or we can reset to bring it back to that factory default screen there instead. And then we go back in, as you can see, we are now fully connected through Apple CarPlay inside of this and it does look very, very nice. Now, if we press the button there, as you can see, we've got the Siri Assistant there. So we press the voice command prompt on the steering wheel, that's going to jump us into our Siri Assistant there instead. If we press the link and sync button along the very bottom, that brings us back to the Sync 3 main screen. We can jump back into CarPlay along the very bottom. We can look at our CarPlay preferences. So we can disable CarPlay if we wanted to. So if we still wanted to be hooked up through USB without using CarPlay, we can simply press there in order to be able to disable CarPlay. And as you see there along the bottom, it's now disconnected it. And then we can completely remove my phone. Watch it. So we remove the phone. Phone is now disconnected from CarPlay. So it really is that simple. You know, setting up an Android device is literally the exact same process. So I've still got my iPhone connected there. So if we were to jump into phone for a second, as you can see, I'm still connected. But if we go change phone, if we had multiple phones connected, it would show up there, or we can just add a phone there as well. So all we're going to do is literally that. We're just going to hit add Bluetooth Search device. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. And on this phone, all we're going to do is wait for, there we go, Lincoln Aviator show up, and we're going to click. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Pin numbers match up there, so that's For great. For your safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions and use sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. And then it's asking me, do I want to allow access to my messages? So we can allow or deny that, etc. We can set it as a favorite phone. So you're going to see this option if you've already set up an another phone. So this is going to be our secondary phone. So we can set this one as our preferred phone, yes or no. And what that means is that if you've got multiple phones connected, if let's say two people that you know, drive or passenger both have their phone connected, whose phone is going to take priority? So you can easily set that one up if you want to. As you can see there, we're connected again. So we go back into my phone there. We're now connected to the Galaxy. We've got my contacts, we've got my keypad, and a number of other things. We're going to change phone again, and as you can see, we've got both phones that are available. We can go to an individual one, we can disconnect it, make it as a favorite, or we can completely remove it. So if we go back into the iPhone, we can reconnect it, we can connect the media, or we can remove it in order to scrap it from the vehicle completely. So as you can see there, we are now fully disconnected. But very similar to the iPhone side of things, we can also set up Android Auto. So we're just going to take our USB cable, we're going to plug it into our available USB port there, opposite end of the cable plug ourselves in and watch this. Android Auto would like to, so we want to do that. We're going to continue. We have to agree to this message. And three, two, one, and we are fully connected. Like, same thing, beautiful, stretched it across the entire screen. I love the way that it looks. So we've got Google Maps that are showing up there. 
pressing along the side there. So that's going to be our Google Map settings. We've got our traffic, route options, things like that. We've got our notification center and our Google Assistant. Pressing this button is going to launch us into our media there as well. So I don't currently have anything there, but if I did, everything would show up. As you can see there, we've got my Google Maps, we've got my phone, we've got messages and a number of other things there. Now we do also have the flexibility of being able to customize this very similar to what we saw on the iPhone side of things. So literally what we want to do on our cell phone, we're just going to search for Android Auto. And when we do, we're just going to have Android Auto settings there. So we're going to hook up and as you can see, we've got the currently connected car. We can customize the launcher. So if we want to do a drag and drop to bring podcasts to the front, whatever the case may be, we can do that. One thing to note, it's not dynamic, so it's not going to dynamically update it the same way it would on the iPhone side of things. So if we press and hold, we drag it, we actually have to restart Android Auto for the changes to take effect, but we still can customize the launcher if we wanted to. Moving back, we've got our Google voice detection, we've got our daylight modes, or day-nighttime modes, we've got Google Assistant, and a few other things. So it is nice to know that we've at least got some flexibility here. Now we can jump into our main screen there again, hop back in, moving down, we go to our Lincoln button there, and that brings us back to this main screen. So if we're in our main screen there, we can hop back into Android Auto, but if we go back to our home screen, we can look at our Android Auto preferences there as well. So we go Android Auto Preferences, we can disable Android Auto if we wanted to, or we can remove the Galaxy. So what I'm going to do, let's disable Android Auto. Let's remove the Galaxy from the vehicle as well. All right, so as you can see there, so we do have the phone fully connected, and then very similar to what we saw on the iPhone side of things, so we can go change phone there. We can add in multiple Bluetooth devices again if we want to. We've got the main Samsung there though, so we can disconnect it or we can fully remove it. So we hit remove, yes, and three, two, one. The phone is now fully disconnected. If we jump into settings for a second there, Android Auto is now gone. We look at Apple CarPlay. Let's remove the phone that I've connected earlier. Remove, and it's gone. And that's one of the nice things. As you can see there, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are now fully removed from this menu. Now, if we were to reconnect the phone as well, it would give us that option of relaunching Android Auto or Apple CarPlay if we wanted to. So we go to plug back in. As you can see, so we now have that flexibility. So we can disable Android Auto, Apple CarPlay very simply. And that's how we set up either an Android or an iPhone device on this vehicle. Now, next up, let's move into factory navigation. So as I showed you earlier, we do have the flexibility of connecting through Android Auto Apple CarPlay to use our phone map app as we want to, but we do have built-in navigation. One of the great things about the built-in nav is that we've got a ton of flexibility. So we can search by GPS coordinates. We can just start typing in an address there as well, and it is a predictive text. So we just start typing, and we're just going to keep on going, giving it a second. There we go, perfect. So it's taken an address. Let's just punch something in there. And as you can see now, we can save it as a favorite or we can just start the navigation. So we press start. Boom, here we go. So it's calculating the route and there it is. Please so, proceed to the highlighted route and then the route guidance will stop. As you can see there, we're now connected. We can cancel the route out along the very top. We can also mute out, so get rid of the voice guidance if we want to. If we hit controls there, we've got some added controls. So if we hit menu now, we can cancel the route. We've got my screen view, traffic list. We've got some navigation settings. We can view the route as well so we can see exactly what's going on. Go back, we can detour. So if we want to detour as we're on the active route, it'll do that for us. So it'll take a second and give us some detour options there. And let's go back. We've got search, we can look at our history. We've got our favorites as well. So that's one of the great things is that there are so many options here. Now, if we go into our navigation settings, we've got some map preferences. So we'd be able to do a ton of things. So we've got our breadcrumbs. So if you want to literally show exactly where you've been, we can show our point of interest icons there as well. If there are accidents, those will show up as well. We've got our route preferences. Do we want the fastest, shortest, or the most eco-friendly route? Do we want to use HOV lanes? Do we want to avoid freeways, toll roads, things like that? Dynamic route guidance. So if there's an accident, it's going to let us know about alternative routes as we go. Some navigation preferences are specifically on our prompts. So as we've got an upcoming turn, do we want to have a voice and tone letting us know? Do we want to have just a voice or strictly a tone? And pressing back, that'll get us out of those base preferences there. And as I said there, we can cancel a route that way if we wanted to, or if we want to, we can also press the X button along the very top in order to cancel the route out that way. There we go, and as you can see, it's now gone. And as I mentioned, we do have the flexibility of searching a few different ways. So we can literally type in the address there. We can view our previously saved addresses so we can look at history, so anything that we previously visited. Moving back, we can go to home and work, favorites, etc. That's going to be the basics of using factory navigation. And one of the cool things, I like how responsive this thing is. Like we can literally drag, drop. We can do a pinch to zoom there as well if we wanted to, very simply. We can circle back in on the car there. We can do a plus or minus if we want to zoom that way out as well. So, oh, 
button slit and it's pretty straightforward there and then we've got our button there in order to change between different modes so we've got our 3d north mode etc simply by pressing the button moving into our app screen along the bottom so there's currently no devices that are connected but i was showing in the apple side of things so i did have a live x live so a, a radio app installed so certain apps will show up on that middle screen Along the bottom right, we've got a series of different settings that are available. First off, we've got our sound settings. So we've got things like adjusting treble mid-range bass. We can adjust our balance and fade very easily as well. So as you can see there, we can literally just do a drag and drop if we wanted to, or we can just reset it to bring it back to the center. We can also, there we go, so we've got a few different options for our surround sound. So we've got our audience version versus on stage and stereo. So it's going to give us a different sound experience when we do that speed compensated volume so as we're going excessively fast on the highway we can have it adjust the speed the the volume as necessary and then our revel experience is just going to be a quick audio test we've got bluetooth there so we can completely disable bluetooth or we can add in bluetooth devices radio we've already seen that one some vehicle settings there are quite a few things here but looking at some of the basics we can turn off our 30 minute idle our rear occupant alert so when we go to turn the vehicle off watch this Easy entry exit, which is a great one because if we go to turn the vehicle off, it's automatically going to lower the seat out for us and back it up in order to get in and out of the vehicle a little bit easier. Same idea with the cargo area there, so it can lower and raise the vehicle as necessary. Easy access height is where we're going to go in order to be able to set that one up. We've got our alarm set up, so we've got a few different options there for the room, for the alarm. I do recommend just keeping the alarm on all the way, so all around. We've got our remote start set up, so we can remote start through our cell phone or through our key fob. We can turn the remote start system off, and when we remote start, what happens? Do we allow our climate control settings to activate? So is it going to be based off of automatic, so the vehicle determines what the cabin temperature should be? Or is it based off of our last settings? Seats and steering wheel, so do we want the heated seats or ventilated seats or the heated steering wheel coming on? And then duration, 5, 10, or 15 minutes for the remote start. Windows, we do have the option of using the key fob in order to remote open and close. Let's hop outside so I can show you how that's done. Right now, we do have the option of using the key fob in order to be able to roll the windows up and down. So it's actually pretty straightforward to be able to do it. So in order to get it done, in order to roll them down, we're going to press the unlock button twice. On the second button press, you're going to hold it. And then in order to lock them, same idea, we're going to press the lock button twice. On that second button press, you're going to hold. So to unlock, we're going to one, two, and hold. So as you can see there, down they go. We can press the lock button part way in order to stop it. And then same idea, we can press the unlock button again twice in order to resume that window down. As you can see there, down they go. And then in order to roll them up, same idea, like I said, we're going to press that lock button twice. And then on the second button press, we're going to hold it. So we're going to go one, two, and hold. And as you can see there, up they go. And same idea, we can press and hold and stop it partway through if we wanted to. And then just button press again, so one, two, in order to get them all up again. So pretty straightforward there, and I love that we've got that option. We've got our wipers there with a few options. So our courtesy wipe, if we've got our windshield wipers going, it's going to take a second and go one more time to clear any, away any excess liquid. Rain sensing wipers, I do recommend turning that one off, especially when you're going into any sort of a car wash. We've got our rear wiper on, so if our front wipers are going, we put the vehicle in reverse, it's going to start our rear wiper automatically for us. Power liftgate, we can turn that system on or off from the outside, so we can disable that switch. We've got some options for lighting there. So our auto high beam, so if the vehicle senses an oncoming vehicle, it's going to dim your high beams completely, and then flip them back on again as that vehicle is passed. Our welcome lighting is what lighting on the outside of the vehicle. Our adaptive headlamps are a great thing. So the headlamps themselves in some versions of the vehicle are going to be adaptive, which means we've got dynamic bending there as well. So as we go to turn, it's literally going to highlight and let us know exactly what's going on with the path in front of us. Auto lamp delay, when we go to lock the vehicle, do our headlamps stay on, yes or no? Locks, we've got a series of different options there. Big ones to point out, so we've got a miss lock chirp. So if you go to shut a door and it doesn't shut all the way, you go to lock, it's going to let you know that that's the case. Remote unlock, so when we go to unlock the doors on the fob, do all doors become unlocked, or is it just the driver's door? And back again, we've got some options for our mirrors. So we've got our auto fold, so when we go to lock the vehicle, do the mirrors automatically fold in? And then we've got, there we go, so our door keypad codes. We've got a five digit number. Factory number is going to be standard, but we can program in multiple other codes if we wanted to. And that's going to give us the flexibility to actually get into the vehicle if we don't have any, if we don't have our key fob on us. 
air suspension service. We can turn that thing on or off if we want to. And then our backup start password. So that's a useful one because this thing does have phone as a key. So if for whatever reason, this is the one that we're going to use if our phone, cell phones died and we don't have our key fob on us. So if we want to start it up, we do need to set this one up in order for it to work first. So we need to have the key fob and everything on us with the Lincoln Way app set up in order for it to work. But we've at least got that flexibility. Moving back again, that's going to be the basics of our vehicle settings. We've got our clock, which we can access here, or we can press the clock along the very top there. So we press clock along the top, and as you can see, we've got AM, PM, adjust hours, minutes. We've got our 24-hour mode. We can have it reset to our GPS location there as well. Moving back, we've got a phone, so that's where we're going to go into our basic phone settings, adding, removing a phone, etc. Driver assistance settings, tons of different options here. So we've got our adaptive cruise control system that works three different ways. Way number one is going to be our normal cruise control. We've got the adaptive, that's the set and forget it cruise, and then the intelligent with a tolerance level. So we set it at a tolerance of zero. So what that means is if the speed limit sign drops, so let's say from 80 to 65, it's going to automatically drop the vehicle to 65 if we've got the cruise control system turned on. And we've got a few other options there as well. So we've got our lane keeping system. Same idea, three ways. The first way, if we start to veer over into a lane without signaling, it's going to give us a little bit of a steering wheel shake. The intensity is the intensity of that shake. We've got another, another option where it's going to literally give us a little aid, so it'll just gently nudge us back into our lane. And then the alert and the aid will do both. So we'll get a little bit of a steering wheel shake, and it'll rebump us back into our lane. Moving back, we've got a pre-collision assist system, so the vehicle can help us out with a few different things. It would have the flexibility to be able to brake for us if it senses a potential collision, or evasive steering is going to put our steering wheel into hyperdrive. We've got speed sign recognition, which we can turn on or off. Our rear view camera, we've got a few other options there as well. Our enhanced parking aid, so as we go to shift into reverse, this is the enhanced parking aid there. So whether or not that one shows up, it's going to be a matter of preference there. And then our delay for the actual rear view camera to show up. Our blind spot system, so let us know if anybody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. Looking at our trailer blind spots, so we look at our trailer selection, we can set our trailer length there as well. And what that's going to do is that's going to extend the blind spot to cover off the dimensions of the trailer. We've got our tow haul mode there as well. Trailer sway control, so if we're carrying a trailer, if the vehicle senses sway going on, it's going to automatically apply engine braking. We've got our hill descent control, which is going to hold us at a set speed there. We've got our cross traffic alert, so as we go to back up, if the vehicle senses somebody on our left or right hand side, it's going to let us know of a potential collision, and then it can actively brake for us as well. Driver alert, if we start to veer over too many times without signaling, it's going to let us know we should probably take a break once our counter hits a certain number. Auto start stop, we can turn that system on or off if we want to. We've got our auto hold setting, so our auto hold setting is an interesting one because if we've got that one turned on and we take our foot off the brake, it's going to literally hold us in place. And then we can also turn our traction control system on or off as well. Next up, we've got our Lincoln Way app. So we can see that we've got our vehicle hotspot. So the vehicle is equipped with an onboard modem, and you can use that for up to 10 devices. We do need a data-only plan through our cell phone provider in order to be able to use that, but we at least have it there as an option. Swinging across the side, we've got some general settings now. So we can change between English, Spanish, French, Celsius, Fahrenheit. We can turn that touch screen beep off. We can also do a master reset. So if the screen's giving you issues, we can just reset the screen if we wanted to. We can do a full reset of the vehicle. We can simply reset the Lincoln Way app instead. So we've got a few options there. Moving back, we've got our 911 assist. Mobile apps. So certain apps will strictly work over USB, so we'd have to turn those ones on there. Moving off to the side. Moving back, and we've got our display mode there as well. So we've got a few different options for the display. So as bright and as beautiful as this is, if you find it too much, we can turn the display off, button press to bring it back to life again, or we can go to a calming screen where it just shows the date time. Same thing, button press to bring that one back to life. Hopping back inside our settings into our display, we've got our background brightness, so we can change the styling of the background or the brightness. This, as of right now, is technically the daytime mode, so we can slip, flip ourselves between daytime or nighttime, locking them out permanently, depending on which mode we like the look of. Auto mode will flip us out between daytime or night, depending on the brightness outside. Takes a second there to update, and three, two, one, and bam. All right, and moving back again, so we've got a few other options. So Wi-Fi and automatic updates work hand in hand. Make sure you connect to a Wi-Fi network at home. Once you do, you're going to want to make sure that you turn automatic updates on, because if the vehicle senses an update's available, it's automatically going to update it for us. Android Auto, let's remove that phone that was connected earlier, and Android Auto is now gone as well. We've got our valet mode and voice control. So let's actually go to our voice control first. 
we've got our advanced mode there. So advanced mode means we won't get as many notifications and messages. So we go to change the station. It's not going to say changing to. It's just going to change the station. Phone confirmation. Do you want to call such and such person? Yes or no. And then our voice command list. So when we press the voice command prompt on the steering wheel, this is going to be the voice command list. Moving back, we've also got our valet mode. So valet mode means that we can enter in a four digit number to lock this screen out. So if we've got a valet driver parking the vehicle, we can make sure they can't look through our navigation, previously saved addresses, things like that. Next up, we've got a few other options. So we've got some ambient lighting, which ambient lighting is great and it's literally gonna be all over different parts of the vehicle. So we've got a few different options for the actual color selector. So we can choose a few different options there and it's gonna show up at, at certain parts of the vehicle. So in our cup holders, things like that. So if we actually go down a tiny little bit, drop down you might just be able to see it it's going to be highlighting going a little crazy there but we've at least got the option of changing out the color if we wanted to moving back we've also got let's go navigation so we've already seen some of these navigation preferences there so we've got some map route preferences etc we've got our seats there as well so the, the vehicle itself is equipped with massage chair seats we can easily turn them on this way if we want to and we've got lower rolling, upper rolling, circular cushion, and a few other options, and a high, medium, or low. So what type of drive or what kind of massage, I should say, do we actually want? And that's going to be for the driver's side. So massage chairs are going to turn off for a second. There we go. And we can switch over to the passenger to adjust the passenger seat. So we just go driver passenger in order to turn one side or the other on. Now, one of the cool things is that we do also have a button just on the left-hand side there as well to be able to adjust that. So we can button press in order to be able to get right into that. And one of the cool things is that we've got even more adjusting parts. So we can adjust individual parts of this seat as well. We do have the flexibility of controlling a few of them on the door. This just gives us a few more advanced options, specifically for more of the interior parts of the seat, so we can get it to hug our body even more. And we can easily exit out of that. And then we've got some personal profiles. So we can set up an individual profile to remember cell phones, preferences for audio, and things like that as well. So if you've got multiple people driving the vehicle, definitely recommend saving a profile in order to be able to set everything up for you as well. And then just button press to move back. We've got our base event controls. We've got this little P button there. So the vehicle can either help us navigate to parking or can help us out with park assist, looking on the left or right hand side for parallel parking, perpendicular parking or parallel park out. So we've got a few different options available there. We also do have, so let's get rid of that our 360 camera. So we push the little camera button. We've got our full 360 view. We've got our front partial view. We go full screen front partial or full screen 180, which is gonna help us out getting out of tight spaces, etc. back into our 360 view instead. And then we just hide that camera instead. We do have a little driver assistance button to get and go through a few basic settings or move through some additional settings. But this is the Sync 4 me or Sync, this is the Sync 3 media screen. Same thing like what we saw last year. So if you want a full walk around on how this screen works, check down in the description below for that walkthrough instead. But as we start to move down a little bit, drop you down. As you can see there, we do also have our piano keys. So park reverse neutral drive, and it is really nice. We've got this nice kind of metallic look throughout, and then it's married with this kind of glossy black highlight instead. From there, we've got our volume rocker and the audio into this thing. Like the song is amazing. I love the band and the bass, which pumps through this audio system even more. Like it is phenomenal the way this thing sounds but we've got our volume rocker. We can turn the audio on off. Tuning rocker, we can seek this way. We can seek using the steering wheel. Now, a few things. As we look kind of right underneath, we do have, so the actual center stack is kind of lifted up a little bit, and we've got some storage space right underneath there as well, which is fantastic. As we start to move down, we've got a series of climate control settings. So we've got our max windshield defroster, rear defroster, our AC. We do have dual, well, technically, I guess it's tri-zone. And then even more than that, we've got quad zone because we can adjust the second and third row temperature on top of that. And that's all done right through the middle screen. So we push the rear button here, and then that brings up this little menu. So we can adjust what's going on with either the second or third row climate. We can link them up if we want to, turn it on off. We can lock them out. We can increase or decrease the fan speed for that third row or turn it off as well. So really straightforward in order to be able to access that menu. And then from there, we do have all of these other buttons. So we've got our heated ventilated first row seats. So we can turn on if we want to all the way, turn off, turn on our cooled seats as well. So it is really nice. We've got that available as an option. Moving down even more. And we do have a few sliders here. So first slider, 
popping that open. We do have a nice amount of storage space. And then we've got a few power points located right on the inside here. Opposite one, we do have a little storage space there. And then we also do have lights, or cup holders, I should say, that do feature ambient lights. So you can see that ambient light turning on. And we can have adjusted out to different colors as well. Down a little bit more, the last little bit. We've got our electronic parking brake, and then there's also a series of different drive modes. And when we adjust our drive modes, it looks really sharp in the center screen. So we can go through, we've got our conserve, excite mode, normal mode, we've got slippery, deep conditions on top of that. If you want to unlock the truest performance of the aviator, you definitely want to be in the excite mode. It's going to rev up the RPMs a little bit more and give you an infinitely more aggressive performance inside of this thing because it shoots up those RPMs, you just go that much faster is really nice. Now from here, we've got this armrest, very, very comfortable, nice stitching kind of follows all the way throughout, which is kind of a nice contrast to what's going on with the seats. But popping this thing open, we've got a 12 volt power point. We've got a little tray that technically is, as you saw there, fully removable. And we've also got a little wireless charge pad there. So if your phone supports wireless charging, we can charge it up there, which is kind of cool. Moving up overhead, we've got the auto dimming rear view mirror, which as of right now still can't be turned off, unfortunately, but it still is there. We've got our base controls as well for our cabin. We've got our, our top control as well for our sunroof. So single button press opens up the shade part way, so about halfway. Secondary button press opens it up the rest of the way, and that's the same way with the roof itself. So we push once. That opens things up pretty much the full way, but secondary button press opens it up that last tiny little bit. So that extra inch or so does matter, but single button press in order to close both the roof itself as well as the shade. Really straightforward. Now from there, we do have our sunglasses holder. We've got our home link system. So if you've got a garage door opener at home, you can easily program it in. We've got our visor, vanity mirror with a built-in light, a little business card holder, and this bad boy is stretching out to block all of the sun, which is fantastic. But like I said, overall styling inside of this thing is great. The dash is fantastic. The optional head-up display there equally as impressive. We've got our time, our temperature, our speed, our speed sign recognition. We've got our gas mileage, so how much fuel we have left. We've also got our lane keeping system. If you had navigation going, that would also show up in the head up display, which is so, so cool. I can't get over how dang comfortable these seats are. Like we can adjust different parts of the backrest. I did mention we can adjust different parts in that screen. We do have massage chair seats. We can even adjust each individual leg cushion when we get the multi-way adjustable seats. So the active motion seats will give you the leg cushion and that multi-way that we can adjust it and kind of squeeze it to perfectly hug our body instead. But this is really nice. Really nice. I like what Lincoln's done with this vehicle. Well, next thing we get to do, see what's going on in that second and third row for spacing. When we look at the second row of the Aviator, the spacing inside of it is actually pretty nice. Now, one caveat to that is the middle seat. So when we get the bench seat inside of the Aviator, it does make things a little bit tight. So the seat itself is locked into place, so we can't slide it forwards or backwards at all. So the one downside to this bench seat is it's locked into place. But, I mean, do you go for the bench seat? Do you go for the dual captain's chairs with or without the console? It's going to be a matter of preference. The console is kind of neat because we've got a little armrest control there. We can control the shade on top of that from the second row. So it's really going to be a matter of preference which way you go. But if you do have the bench seat, we can drop down, push open some cup holders, which is kind of cool. So very straightforward there. It is really, really nice. Now, the second row seats are very comfortable at the same time. So, I mean, we could pull in order to be able to kind of recline the seat. And then, so this is with the receipt fully reclined back as far as it's gonna go. I've got three-ish, a little over three inches of headspace there. So plenty of space. Could you fit three full-size versions of me in the second row? I mean, technically, <laughs> with the big one being this middle seat instead. So it is very, very tight for me inside of the middle seat of the bench. So whether or not you decide to go that route, I did mention it's gonna be a matter of preference, but 
spacing wise isn't too bad but some basic features and styling though we do have all of the same highlights that we saw along the driver's side door back here. So we've got the nice highlight along the side. We've got that beautiful interior kind of leather that flows throughout the door, follows all the way throughout the seats on top of that, which is pretty cool. Now on top of that, we have this little control pad in the back, which gives us the flexibility of being able to control the seats, the climate, we can control the audio as well, which is fantastic. And we've got general settings there too, but we do have the control for our heated second row seats on the outboard. So it doesn't matter if you have the bench seat or the dual captain's chairs, the outer outboard seats are the only seats that are gonna be heated inside of this vehicle. We've got all of our different bottle holders along the door. I did mention we've got some cup holders there. We've got some pockets behind the first row seats. And then just underneath the bottom part of the armrest, we do have two more power points. Well, I should say, I guess, technically three, because we've got a USB, USB-C, as well as a traditional wall outlet back here too. But the plugs that you get are gonna depend on how you have your vehicle configured. As we move up overhead, we do have, so our handle, so assist handle driver passenger side with a little clothing hook on both sides. And then we also do have a little light control back here too. Now, one other cool thing is that we do have a second row shade back here. So things are a little bit too bright. All we have to do up and over in order to block things off and it blocks it off nicely. So it dark, darkens things up as you saw there. So, I mean, really, really easy to use. It's kind of nice all at the same time. I like it. Let's see what's going on with that third row. All right, now getting into the third row of the Aviator, pretty straightforward. Now, I did mention we do have the option for either the bench seat, like what we're looking at here, or we've got the dual captain's chairs. So, I mean, obviously, if we had the dual captain's chairs, we could just kind of walk and waddle our way back through to that third row if we wanted to. But because we've got the bench instead, we actually have to move the seat. So, in order to do that, we've got a button right along the top of the seat. That's going to power fold it forward. And, ooh back we go so let's get that headrest Ugh. back up again so spacing wise in the third row it's a little bit tight so when i'm sitting off to the left hand side a little bit easy enough for me to sit in the seat to a degree like knee space is actually it's it's pretty tight back here so i mean my right knee is kind of touching the middle seat here and that's the downside of getting the bench because oh, let's just get this out of the way for you if you have people that are a little bit taller i mean yeah we could just fold the bench down and it makes it a little bit easier but if we get the dual captain's chairs instead you just kind of throw your legs up and over if you needed to kind of stretch out a little bit unless you've got kids because we've got all of our anchor points and tethers and things like that in the second and the third row so if you need front facing rear facing child seats not going to have an issue whatsoever but i mean you could fit two full-size versions of me back here with the bench it's going to be a little tight because that bench seat is locked into place we can't slide it forwards or backwards at all so if you know you're going to have four or five adults in there probably a good idea to go for the bench or the dual captain's chairs instead of the bench just to give a little bit more leg room to people that are in this third row instead but with the seat back kind of its minimal distance along the left side i've got more than enough space but it still comes down to that middle seat it would be very very tight back here for me uh, overall just impressions of the seat itself in the third row not quite as comfortable as what we found inside of the second row it still is nice that we've got a third row seat here though but i mean if i had to if i had to go on longer distance trips wouldn't necessarily mind it too much we've got a nice leather here but one thing that would be really really cool in this third row is that if we had seats that could recline a tiny little bit yeah, so unfortunately these things are locked into place but i mean at the same time there is still technically room for two full-size versions of me back here now other things to point out we do have a little storage tray along both the driver passenger side we do have some cup holders back here and then we've got a little overhead light on top of that one cool thing is that we do have essentially quad zone climate control i guess is what we can say because we've got our dual zone for the front we've got single zone for the middle and then we do have controls through that console behind the first row armrest in order to control what's going on with the temperature in the third row which is kind of nice but overall spacing styling wise is pretty nice i do wish the seats were a tiny bit more comfortable and that they could recline a little bit but overall this is pretty good now getting out really simple 
looking at fuel quality inside of the aviator, same as last year. So we do have a non-locked cover when we look at the regular gas version. When you're in the hybrid, it's going to be a locked cover instead. And that's just got to do with depressurization and all that fun stuff. Minimum manufacturer's recommendation is just your regular 87 gas. So regular fuel inside of Ontario. So as long as you're using at least that 87, you're going to get good performance. But little bit of a caveat, the horsepower and torque specs that we were looking at underneath the hood are achieved using a premium fuel. So do you need to use a premium? No, but if you want the best possible performance out of this thing, 91, 94 octane, ideally where you want to live. But I mean, at the same time, it's not necessary. Now, one other thing, if you are looking at putting the vehicle under a heavier load, so if you're towing, I would recommend looking at putting a premium fuel in while you're towing. But again, it's your choice if you do, because minimum manufacturer's recommendation is just 87. Now, the back end of the aviator, we do have a little kind of like spoiler over top, which is kind of neat because our rear wiper is actually hidden there, which is kind of nice. We do have our Lincoln badge right along the back of the vehicle, beautiful LED tail lamps. We've got our reverse sensing system. We've got our backup camera. And then we also do have a quad tip exhaust. Now, one thing you might just be able to see is we've got this, and this is a little cover for our trailer tow package. So it's going to cover up our receiver, our four, seven pin provisions, etc. Now, if you are looking at towing inside of the aviator up to 5,600 pounds, so it is a pretty decent towing amount that we've got there. If you need a little bit more, Navigator is where you're going to want to be. So, I mean, it's ultimately going to be your choice, Navigator versus Aviator. Navigator is a little bit bigger of a vehicle, but if you need that extra towing capacity, Navigator is about 2,000 pounds more than what you can pull inside of this thing. So, it still is pretty respectable though, looking at what it can tow. We've got a few different ways that we can get into the cargo area of the vehicle. We've got our foot activated lift gate. We can do it on the key fob. We can do it just to the left hand side of the steering wheel. But if you wanted to, you could also manually do it yourself. We do have a little button. So just underneath that second L in Lincoln, we've got a button there. We're just gonna push, up it goes. But let's have a peek at the cargo dimensions. All right, now the Aviator does have a pretty good amount of space to it for just the cargo area by itself. If you need that tiny little bit more, we could just lift this whole thing up and kind of store it in the back. That's going to give us a bit more height there as well, which is kind of nice. But we do have, as you can see there, three individual rows. So if we need a little bit more space, what we could do is just in the back here, we've got a series of buttons. So we can fold down the left seat, the right seat, or both seats together if we want to. So we just do a press. Down it goes. And as you can see there, so it is going to be a power down and power back up for the third row. Second row is just going to be a manual fold up and down. But I mean, as you can see there, it does open things up nicely. Now, this one is obviously going to be the bench seat because we've got that third seat. So the middle seat there. But whether you go for the six or seven seater is going to depend on you. But I mean, one of the benefits of having that bench or the dual captain's chairs instead of the bench is that you would be able to kind of slide things in there. We could fold that seat down fairly easily all at the same time. So just from the inside here, if we wanted to, we could just crank this tab over top and down that seat goes. And then just along the side of the second row, we've got a release there, but I mean, it opens it up even more when we've got that second and third row folded down. So it's gonna be a matter of how much space do you actually need inside of this thing? Like I said, because we can easily fold down the second and third row, the bench seat, not necessarily a bad thing unless we're trying to get some larger people into the third row on top of that. That's the one time I'd probably recommend looking at the dual captains instead of the bench seat. But overall, this styling is pretty nice and there's still a pretty good amount of space inside of this thing. So off to the left hand side here, we've got these three buttons that I'd mentioned we can use in order to fold the third row seats up or down. We can fold down each seat independently if we want to. We've got a few cargo hooks back there as well. And then you do have the option for a privacy shade. So a small shade, which we could get aftermarket from our dealer. So very simple to install there, but it is a fairly small one all at the same time. Now, other things to point out, we've got a 12 volt power point back here, another little cargo hook on top of that. And then we could access it from the third row, but we've got a little storage space right along the top there. Now, outside of that, nothing to the left or to the right hand side. Off to the left, we do have a speaker back there, and that's because this is the upgraded sound system because we're in the 201A reserve model of the vehicle. But other things to point out, we do have 
this removable tray. When we remove it, it gives us a boatload of space underneath. We've got a tiny little bit of storage space as well. We can kind of throw some things under there if we want to. And then if we ever need to get to our spare tire, we're just going to lift this up and we've got our spare tire underneath with our jack and things like that. Now, one interesting thing, being a Lincoln owner, is that you also do have access to Lincoln roadside assistance. So it's going to be based off of our powertrain warranty, but we do have a good amount of coverage there. So if you ever break down, if for whatever reason you need to have your tire changed, need gas, whatever the case may be, you can call on Lincoln Roadside Assistance. They'll either send somebody to come help you out or tow you to a Lincoln dealer instead, which is fantastic. Think of it almost like CA or AAA down in the States, but rather than being tied to the person, it's tied to that specific vehicle instead. Now, one other thing that's slightly different from 22 to 23 is we've got the option for a foot activated liftgate delete. So this thing, normally, you'd just be able to swipe your foot underneath and the liftgate would lift up automatically. It's part of the hands-free package. But we do have the option of getting the hands-free delete. It's going to save us a couple bucks from the factory. So if that's not a feature you care about, you can technically order that if you want to. And we still have the option of opening up this way, key fob, and then just to the left-hand side of the steering wheel as well. Well, folks, that was a look at the 2023 Lincoln Aviator. What did you think? Few small changes from 22 to 23, maybe some notable ones, and I can't wait until this thing gets that interior upgrade to sync for. But if you have any questions, drop down in the comment section below and let me know. More than willing to talk you through any issues that you might be having. And I did mention that you can find all of those different walk around videos for the steering wheel cluster, the media screen, park assist, using the adaptive cruise control, etc., all in the description of the video. But if you found this one useful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and until I see you next time, take care. So whether you're a Lincoln owner or but minimum manufacturer's recommendation is technically just your 87 octane, so regular fuel inside, I'm, I'm, I'm in Ontario. Now, we could push that left so the minus button, yeah.